Hi everyone, I'm journalist Jeff Smith here at Ono Academic College to talk about how diverse and multicultural this student body is and why that is so important. With me now is Professor Talia Miron Schatz. Professor, in your opinion, why is it important to have a diverse and multicultural student body? Here, it's important because we used to say we want to change the way Israel looks. We want to change Israeli society. And you can't say this as a slogan and then only admit a certain kind of student. If you don't integrate, you can't expect to have an integrated society. Ono Academic College was the first campus in the country to really dedicate a campus and a, a, a field of study that tailors towards ultra-Orthodox Jewish students. There's a special program now for Ethiopian Israeli students. There's an outreach for higher education in the Arab Israeli and Druze societies as well. These populations, how do they coexist? How do they interact while they're here studying? So the best way to get people to work together, to be together, to coexist, is to have a joint mission. So if both of us are here as students, then I don't care where you come from. I care. Is he a nice guy? Maybe we can study together. Some of the programs are segregated and some are not. There's a lot of dispute on that. Like, should we segregate? I think if we have to, then it's our mission. And there are real life accommodations. There have to be, as you mentioned, yes. you know, with religious students, with ultra-Orthodox, you know, to make sure that they're studying in a classroom, in an environment mm -hmm. where they can, they can be allowed to participate in, in, according to their beliefs and their customs, but also still be exposed to life as a student on a real college campus. Yeah. I've been teaching ultra-Orthodox women for a long time. Then I play a song before class. It's a song from the Noam Elimelech, Rabbi Elimelech from Luzhansk. It's called, it, it, it's very pretty, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing off key. It's Oy Yad Rabbe Yad Rabbe, Ten Velibeinu, Shenirei Kol Echad, Malat Chavereinu. I thought that sounded on key. <laughs> it was very beautiful. They look at me and they're like, what? There's dissonance here. This woman who's wearing pants, her head is not covered, but she knows something from our culture. And I find that this opens up a whole new perspective a whole new kind of, of ease. They sit at ease. They say, okay, we're not these weird foreigners who may know less than her. The beauty of Ono Academic College is this diversity among the student body, that everyone is here together. I'd imagine that's also the challenge in the real world when, especially in the Middle East, especially in Israel, it's a complicated place. It's a place of tension. A lot of times there is violence, there's war. Uh, there's politics. Does that seep in to the learning environment? Do you want it to be part of the discourse or do you try and keep it a bubble? What's your approach? I'll tell you of a, a little miracle, okay? Um, I was teaching master's students, MBA students, and one of them was an Arab from East Jerusalem, a lady, and the other was a police officer. And she asked him a question. She asked something about, along the lines of, demonstrations and protests and something of how they do something and it was a very tender moment <laughs> you could hear a pin drop and I thought how I cherished this moment because this dialogue could occur what makes Ono unique in your mind what makes Ono stand out from the other colleges and universities in this country what makes Ono a special place the leadership no doubt we have an owner and a leader who's an entrepreneur. You think of a program, boom, it happens. And that's amazing. And I have to say, it doesn't come at the expense of academic quality. What makes Ono stand out to you? No doubt it's the vision that's shared by everyone. It's the multiculturalism. It's the fact that we don't say, oh, there's a problem. We need, ultra-Orthodox women need to be educated. We say, let's do it. How can we do it? And everyone's committed. And everyone says, I'm going to do it. And it's actions, expanding. Actions, not words. Actions. actions. Actions, not words. We open up campuses in the periphery. We deliver education where people need it. So you asked me about the difference between us and other colleges. And I want to talk about a similarity. The similarity is quality. 
Similarity is quality in research. We are great lecturers, but we also do great research. The quality here is truly outstanding. I mean, six years running now, lecturers here have been awarded the title of best lecturers in the country. That's got to be cool, right? How do you explain that? Best college lecturers in Israel right here at Ono Academic College. I think it's a great team. We really are a great team. And I think that's what's expected of us. And we know that it's important. I guess the very last thing I want to ask, I mean, you, you are teaching students. Yes. Are they also teaching you? They teach me initiative. They teach me how to take whatever I teach and make it different and make it bigger and what, how they view it in the world. Professor, we've used words like diversity and multiculturalism and opportunity. How does Ono Academic College, how do you put those words into action? So Ono is the first college in Israel, the first academic institution to open up separate classes for Haredi, for ultra-Orthodox women and men, on separate days even, on a separate campus. So you can say, well, wait a minute, you're, you're segregating, but our, our thought was we want them to integrate, they want to integrate. So we said, we understand you. We understand where you are. We understand where you're coming from. We're not going to demand that you make a 180 degree switch and come to where we are. We'll come to you. So in some ways we really go all the way toward them and we accommodate. In other ways we say, you have to come to us, but we'll help you. We'll help you. Here's a bridge. And I'll also hold your hand. Don't be afraid. You're not going to fall. I'm right here for you. That's, I think, what really part of the beauty of what we do. Professor, what happens at the end of the journey, the end of the process here? What do you hope the results are? What do you see? I hope for my students what they hope for themselves. I don't know if my ultra-Orthodox students frame their hopes as, I want to start a revolution. But at the end of the road, what you see is, I'm going to have a profession. I'll live a different life. I'll, sh I'll set a different example for my kids. That's enormous. That's really huge. And I'm so proud when this happens, and I'm so happy for them, and so really proud of just being part of this journey. You've taught so many students, but is there one that really stands out to you, a student's special journey or success story that holds a really special place in your heart, Professor? Um, I can think of a few. I can think of someone who was very bashful. She contacted me after I taught her. She said, would you write me a letter of recommendation? I'm applying for a fellowship. I want to study more. I want to do more. And she was ultra-Orthodox. She came with a friend. She was like, will you do this for me? Do you remember me? He said, of course I remember you. Of course I'll do this for you. It's like you can, you can climb to a higher level now.